I won't stop till I hear him say Warning. The information that we convey in these videos and the content on this page simply provides general consumer information. It is not legal advice or regulatory guidance. It is not intended to sway your personal bias in any way. We are simply just relaying information already available to the general public. We highly suggest you do your own research and draft your own opinion on the topics disclosed in this video breakdown. Without further ado, sit back, relax, enjoy this video breakdown, and if you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, consider doing so now. Interest rate is, right. And does inflation really hurt the ultra wealthy? Typically it doesn't because they own assets that go up in price. Right. So I, I kind of look at, unfortunately, the, the middle class people will probably get hurt a lot more right. than the higher end. Alrighty, what is going on CyberX Advanced YouTubers? Welcome back to the CyberX YouTube page. I hope that everybody had an amazing weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very intuitive video breakdown for you all here today. Again, giving you all pieces of the puzzle video snippets that I've collected from amazing interviews, very, very intellectual and intuitive video breakdown for you guys to pay in close attention to, ladies and gentlemen, okay? There is a massive disruption coming, whether you want to believe it or not. And here as an influencer, not only on uh, the Twitter space, but also on the YouTube space and as a physical day trader alongside the crypto and Forex markets, uh, I do feel that it is necessary to wake individuals up. What you decide to do with this information after I present it to you is up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not financial advice. This is already readily available information that you alone can go and partake in if you just decide to, uh, you know, take some time out of your day, put the elbow grease in. I highly advise, ladies and gentlemen, that you guys do do your own personal research. Don't take my word for it. Really consider sitting down, maybe even just 30 minutes a day if you have a nine to five job. I know sometimes it sucks and uh, you can feel pinched for time, but education is is uh, a must, ladies and gentlemen, when you're involving yourselves in these cryptocurrency markets or just in general, any market in general, okay? So this is an interesting article from the World Economic Forum. Again, these elite individuals, the IMF, the World Economic Forum, the Financial Stability Board, the World Bank, right? The Bank of International Settlements, they all use key phrases and keywords. The meat of their articles are all fluff and will mislead you into believing something different, but you want to just pay attention to the little key phrases, okay? So we see this article came out October 13, 2022. Recession warning from the IMF, what you need to know about the global economy this week. And we come down here again, the meat of the article, the IMF has warned of a disorderly repricing in the markets, literally says it right here repricing in the markets, saying global financial stability risks have increased, raising the risk of contagion and spillovers of stress between markets. When you see this right here, that means breakage between economic markets, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Um, this is insane to see in the same sentence of potential repricing in markets, all right? Why is that in comparison with two things? Number one, market manipulation does 110% exist. If you guys haven't seen past YouTube videos of me recommending some books to you guys, where uh, in those books talks about heavy market manipulation, black pools of liquidity, market makers that people don't even understand or know exist, I highly advise you to go back, backtrack, try and check out those YouTube videos to get those book recommendations and read, okay? Education, again, like I said, is a must. Um, the fund said that colliding pressures from inflation, war-driven energy and food crisis and higher interest rates were pushing the world to the brink of a recession. However, majority of governments around the world are pretty much saying that everything is fine. That is a big red flag. The three largest economies, the United States, China, and the euro area will continue to stall. I'm not going to butcher that one. The IMF's chief economist said in a statement, in short, the worst is yet to come. And for many people, 2023 will feel like a recession. So ladies and gentlemen, again, you know, personally, I don't have any of my capital sitting in banks or institutions at anything, or if anything, I have, you know, money enough in my bank account to pay my necessities or my bills, but everything else I have in physical assets, such as gold, silver, cash. And then obviously, of course, I have my crypto protected and safe on cold storage wallets. Okay. I cannot sit here and tell you guys what to do, but I highly, highly suggest that you at least to do your research on what is coming, ladies and gentlemen, what happens when financial shutdowns happen when when these systems collapse look at what's happened in the past atms okay are going to shut down physical banks are going to shut down right you don't want to get stuck in a scenario where you don't have access to your capital okay it is going to be extremely devastating for you and your family 
if you do not have access to your capital, if such a thing happens, I'm not sitting here putting a date on this. Nobody knows when this is going to happen. But ladies and gentlemen, through hours of research, you cannot deny that there is about to be a major systematic collapse from our financial system. These elites know exactly what's coming. They're going to mask it like nothing's happening. And uh, we'll move accordingly. Anyways, billionaire Chamath, I'm not going to butcher that one, issues a warning to investors, says Fed's on a path to overcorrecting and breaking the markets again. Paying attention to key phrases. IMF says stress between markets coming over here. Key phrases, breaking the markets, ladies and gentlemen. Nearly a year after accurately nailing the start of a major crash in global markets, billionaire Chamath is warning investors that the Federal Reserve is determined to crush demand in effort to tame inflation. Um, if you take a very, this is a, a direct quote from him. If you take a very balanced view of what happened this week, you have to start to think with the Federal Reserve and really what they said is that Fed rates will probably be higher than all of you think, and they'll be higher for longer than all of you think. Without debating whether that's going to come to pass or not, the thing that you can do is you can build a little sensitivity model to understand that the mathematical implication of it, basically what it means is that the dollars that are right in front of you are now meaningfully more important than the dollar that's far, far away from you. They say that investors should now be prepared for the scenario where the Fed keeps raising rates until 2025. Hmm. Interestingly enough, I've been saying this to you guys for quite some time now. If you've been watching this YouTube channel for some time, I've given you guys no bullish moon boy price predictions for 2022. I told you guys that wasn't happening. I even told you guys over five months ago that the SEC was going to push the court case back until when? spring 2023 ladies and gentlemen everybody was giving you false hopium saying that september august october november was going to be settlement they were telling you iso 222 was going to have some type of market effect in november i'm telling you ladies and gentlemen the the research that we do here at cyprax is so fine-tuned and intuitive okay ladies and gentlemen real fast i'd like to take a quick break and announce that we are going to be publicly uploading on the rumble platform if you are not already aware Rumble is a place where people with something to say and something to share who believe in authentic expression and want to control the value of their own creations can speak freely. This means that here at Cyprex, what you all have been waiting for, we can give you a more in-depth perspective on the global elites from an uncensored point of view on the shadow government and the hidden agenda behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen. So if that interests you and you want a more in-depth perspective from an uncensored point of view, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and give us a follow on the Rumble platform. The link is in the description down below of this YouTube video. Let's dive back into this YouTube video breakdown. All right. With that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy these video breakdowns. Go ahead and smash that thumbs up button if you like these awareness videos. Ladies and gentlemen, we do appreciate the love and the support. We are growing a YouTube channel here. So without further ado, let's jump into these video breakdowns. The, the easing talk that the Fed put in there to give itself room to, to pivot if it has to, uh, Powell very clearly answered the question more than once, you know, what are you going to do if push comes to shove? Is it going to be the economy or inflation? You know, we are going to err on the side of doing too much or too little. And he very clearly said doing too much. And the reason why he, you know, he quickly reassured the audience that, oh, but don't worry, we have the tools to step in and support the economy if we go too far. In other words, they're planning to go too far. They will go too far. That's the, that's the default program right now. But don't worry, we have the tools. We'll fix it. So I don't know when this happens exactly, David. I think it happens in 2023. Maybe not at the beginning, but I'll be very surprised if we get too far into 2023 before there's real signs of pain and the Fed starts talking about remembering its other side of its dual mandate. What, what do you mean real signs of pain, Lobo? Can you be specific as I'm, to what things will break? So I think the reality will be... Um, pain and it would i would say it would rival what we saw in the 1930s except it'll be disguised like nowadays you don't have to stand in a line to get soup from a soup kitchen you get a credit card from the government or a debit card i don't know what kind of card it is you get a government card and you go to the supermarket like everybody else and you buy your your government assisted food um so it could be that things get much worse but they're not so visibly bad let me just break this down if they're not visibly bad lobo i don't want to misinterpret what you mean if they're not visibly bad why would the average american need to worry because the average American will have less money to spend. A lot of them will have no money well, to spend. That's, a lot of them will have no money well, to spend. That's, well, uh, Jerome Powell is not Paul Walker. How high do you think the Fed funds rate could go before they eventually pivot? Well, right now, what's expected is that they'll be able to get the Fed rate up to 5%. Uh, first, let's see if we can get there without something breaking in the financial system or without something breaking in the financial system. Uh, you saw the issues that were happening in the UK with their pensions. Um, they were able to somewhat resolve that, even though the UK rates are still quite high. Uh, but if they can get up to 5% without anything significantly breaking, 
uh, they definitely could try to get there. Okay. If you take a look at 2008, for example, things started collapsing around uh, fall 2008 in a trough around, I believe, the, uh, the spring of 2009. That's about a roughly six to seven month of ballpark, roughly a half a year period of a bear market. We've already seen that chance. So uh, what are the chances that we're going to get a rebound from here is basically what investors are wondering. Because if you just take a look at historical precedents, again, 2008, for example, you know, we've already kind of exceeded the uh, usual length of a bear market before things trough. Have we not? Actually, I don't think we have for this sort of a drawn out okay. bear market. In that example, you cite the the high, like we just had the high made basically New Year's Day of this year. So we're about nine or 10 months into it. Uh, the high in that great financial crisis was October of 2007. So that was an 18 month bear market essentially before you bottomed. Uh, we're only halfway into that. Uh, same thing in the dot com bubble. We peaked in March of 2000, didn't hit a final low until March of 2003. It took three years. Um, and then the previous one everyone cites, uh, was 1973 and 74, and that was a nearly two-year bear market. So uh, it could go well into next year, and uh, it's something that we're constantly monitoring because if you do see a full capitulation where now investors panic too far, we want to be sure that we're a step ahead and, and we're ready to take advantage of that. But as of now, we think the environment is still a bit too complacent among investors. The interest rate is. Right. And does inflation really hurt the ultra-wealthy? Typically, it doesn't because they own assets that go up in price. Right. So I, I kind of look at, unfortunately, the, the middle-class people will probably get hurt a lot more right. than the higher end. Uh, one thing I've been watching is the Biden administration has come out with more stimulus checks in an effort to help people better manage their energy bills going into the winter. And uh, for those who understand economics, you realize that this is just going to exacerbate the problem. You know, speaking about that, it's a huge amount, $13 billion in aid um, to, to families to help lower their energy bills. I mean, why, why release that now? Well, I think you called it because of midterms, because it makes them look good. And it's all just political theater. And because the, the average Joe and Jane looks at that and says, well, yeah, George and Daniel, I mean, of course, they're going to give them uh, free aid. I mean, this is the humanitarian thing to do. But they don't understand economics and they don't realize that by helping them with their energy bill, you're just hurting them with their food bill. Uh, there, there's no, you know, there's no free money here. So if you're going to reduce the cost by giving people money for X, you're going to increase the cost of Y. So on net balance over the long run, it's just going to put them in a worse position. You think we would have learned this back in 2020 when we shut down the economy, we did all these lockdowns, these governments, these central planners, these authoritarians, and then they gave out these stimulus checks and it caused what? Inflation. So the poor and middle class are worse off today than they were in 2019. So the poor and middle class are worse off today than they were in 2019. But now what these politicians are trying to do is just double down on the same bad policies that created the, pro the problem in the first place in an effort to buy votes. It just goes to show you, Danielle, it's something I talk about on my channel all the time, that you've got to come to the conclusion that these politicians are either stupid or evil, or maybe some of them are both, because you know that the Kamala Harris's of the world and the, and the Bidens and these other people, they know that this policy, using this one as an example, is going to make matters worse, but they do it anyway. So why would they do that? The only conclusion you can come to is that they either don't get that the policy is bad or they know the policy is bad. They're doing it anyway because they're just plain evil people because they have no moral North Star. They're ethically bankrupt. And that's the, 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 the group of characters we're dealing with right now when it comes to the politicians, not just in the United States, but all the bureaucrats with the EU and the global elite at the World Economic Forum, the IMF, the UN, etc., just like we had in the 1940s and just like we had in the 1970s. So we're going to stick it to those greedy capitalists who are increasing prices to crush the poor and middle class by capping the amount of price increases that they can actually implement. We're going to take their profits away from them. So I think this is kind of the, uh, the battle cry that you're going to hear going into 2023. Again, to crush the poor and middle class by capping. The Unfortunately, the, the middle class people will probably get hurt a lot more right. than the higher end. Why would the average American need to worry? Because the average American will have less money to spend. A lot of them will have no money that's, to spend. That's, that's Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the video breakdown today. I hope that this video drives you to do your own personal research. Take it upon yourself to be financially responsible in these markets and in your personal life. As always, ladies and gentlemen, blessings to you all. Make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Be cognizant, be aware, and I will see you guys in the next YouTube video breakdown. Won't stop till I hear him say. Oh, oh, oh.